Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast episode 17. My name is Hannah and I am in Northern Tasmania in Australia. I am mum of two little girls. I'm originally from Sweden but I have lived here for the past 10 years or so. I knit and I spin, I dye yarn and fibre and I do lots of different crafty things and I have this podcast that you're welcome to join. Thank you to everybody who's watching for however long you've been watching. If you're tuning in for the first time, I really hope you will like it and you'll come back. I am recording a week early really, uh, if you look at my plan for recording of the schedule. I recorded only a week ago, but um, for different reasons I wanted to record again today and have a new op um, episode out there. Oh, can you see the steam from my tea? I don't know, maybe I should move it. It's quite early in the morning here and the um, girls are just off to school, my husband's off to work and I have so much to do today so I thought I'll just want to get the, the podcast recorded while I have my cup of tea and recharge and get ready for the rest of the day. So I hope the light is okay and everything like that. Anyway, what was I saying? I'm recording a bit earlier than I would normally do, a week early because I want to get this done. The first reason is that we have a dialogue going on in our Ravelry group, Rose Hip Knits Podcast is the group on Ravelry. And I did dye some yarn the other day and I took photos of every step that I did and I thought I'll, I'll post those photos, which is some little headings of what I'm doing in the photos. I'll post all of those at the end of this episode. It's about two, three two, three minutes long um, for anyone who's interested because I do hope that more people will join the dialogue. There's already a lot of beautiful um, skeins posted in the FO thread and there's also a lot of chatter going on, a lot of people that are interested in trying dyeing for the first time and some that are using food colours, others that are using acid dyes for the first time. I've seen um, that there are a couple of people that like to try uh, natural dyeing and there has been some natural dyeing also. So yes, there's just lots going on and I hope that more people will take the opportunity to try dyeing if you haven't tried it before. And I can show you the price for the dialogue. This is a bag that Katie of Knit and Stitch Bits um, donated to the podcast for a price and I thought that would be a very nice price for the dialogue so it's a beautiful bag. So if you post something you've dyed in the FO thread on Ravelry you um, enter to win this bag. So that's the dialogue, that's the reason why I'm, I'm actually recording a week early. Also how my schedule work with um, work and also um, my daughter's school is that every second week I have the Wednesday that I can record as well but I only have that every second week and um, that's this week and it's just um, it's better to record in this in this week every second week but the week that I can do the Wednesday just gives me more time in that week to um, do all my other work as well so I'm hoping by recording today I can get back on doing the Wednesday every second week. Okay, other thank yous. Claire from New Hampshire Knits audio podcast. She kindly mentioned me in her latest episode. Claire has a wonderful podcast that I discovered quite a while ago now and um, she has a beautiful Scottish accent and she it's just a really nice voice and she talks about interesting things and she's had some really interesting interviews in her on her podcast. So I'd like to say thank you, Claire. I was really happy 
to hear you mention me and that you had enjoyed my podcast over your um, summer break. So anyone who's interested in an audio podcast and you haven't listened to Claire before, you just go and check out a New Hampshire Myths podcast. And I think I, I mentioned a few more audio podcasts um, later on in this episode because I haven't really talked about it before and I do listen to a lot of audio podcasts. It's how it all started for me. So if anyone's interested, I'll mention them later on and I'll link them in the show notes. And the show notes you can find at um, rosehipnitspodcast.blogspot.com. I actually recorded this episode yesterday. I had this idea that I was going to go a little bit fancy and record with a proper camera. And I had it all set up here on a tripod and it's all organized. And I went through all the things and I thought it looked okay when I looked in the little viewer on the camera. But then when I was putting it all on the computer and looked at it in our view, I just did not get a focus, focused picture. So it was all quite grainy. The audio wasn't very good. And I thought, oh, it's okay for the one episode. And then I go back to use, using my laptop because that's what I'm using. Uh, just my MacBook Pro. And... Um, but then I thought, no, I don't want to do that to you. I don't, no. I wanted to improve the, the picture of my um, podcast, but no, it was the opposite. So, no, I'm just recording again today. If anyone knows of any good source of where you can find information of how to record with a um camera instead of just using the camera on on the laptop please let me know I might try it again but it's quite time consuming to do any sort of new thing when you're limited on time okay and um, I should get on with some knitting and other crafty things it's only been a week since I last recorded as I have mentioned several times now so I have not um I don't know I don't have a great deal to show you, but I do have some. I have a finished object, I have some works in progress, and some things that I'm planning to start on. So, let's start. What I finished are the socks that I had started working on in the last episode. And these are the finished socks. These are a sport weight sock yarn. It's called TT Healthy, and this is from Finland. But I bought it um, when I was in Sweden recently. And I had, I made another pair of socks that some of you might have seen uh, in a blue and purple stripe colorway. And I had two partial skeins, maybe 25 grams in two different skeins. So about almost 50 grams left, I think. But not quite. No, I think it was less than that. Anyway, I also had a skein in the same brand, different colorway, in these colors here. I only had 50 grams of that. So what I did was that I divided the 50 gram skein into... Um, two balls and then I had other two partial skeins and I started doing these toe up and then I used my 9 inch circular and I've only used top down on the 9 inch circular before but I wanted to do toe up because I wanted to use as much as I could of my leftovers and my skein so I did them toe up and I started with only that blue purple and then I started to stripe it with the um, brown and green skein and first I did two rows of each skein and I did that for a while and then I thought oh, I want to make the blue skein which I had the least of I want that to 
keep going up on the leg as well and I was worried here that it I would only get to the foot or to the heel and then I would only have the green and brown and I thought that might look a bit weird so I started to only do the one round of the blue and two of the green brown and I did that for a little bit and then I started to do three rounds of the green brown skein and one of the blue purple I'm sorry this is maybe it sounds very confusing but um, I did manage to get that um, smaller skein to last all the way up here and then I used only the the green and brown and I used the green and brown for the afterthought heel so these are for my husband uh, sport weight as I mentioned and I use um, 56 stitches I do use just a 2 by 2 rib and I only just, I haven't weaved in the ends yet I had to use a bit of leftovers here to make it all around <laughs> so I have minimal well, I have about this much left in total so I'm very happy with those and it's funny, I am. Um, I get much more excited and I get much more pleasure from knitting things like this where I'm just trying to use every last scrap of something and I have to be, like, I have to be a bit inventive, maybe is the word, about how I use the skeins and have to sort of design the pattern a bit just to make it all work and make it all look okay and achieve what I want so much fun it just adds that little bit of extra enjoyment to the knit <laughs> might sound weird but yes I did those and I did them on a 2.25 um, Chiago so I have two of these so I did two socks uh, during the same time and I used my Knit Pro Novas for the toes and heels yes I have that in my little bag I made so that's what I finished and I should just mention that I'm wearing my Mognoma shawl and I have um, have had that on before on the podcast um, have a tea break <laughs> I'm drinking a, a tea that I, I finally found here in in my town a while ago I visited a friend down in Hobart and she had most tasty Earl Grey tea that I've had for a long time and it's this one and I bought this at a it's a cool health shop like where they have all the grains and gluten-free stuff and healthy stuff <laughs> so this is the organic Earl Grey and it says it has organic Mediterranean bergamot oil and it actually makes the tea bags a bit yellow from that from the oil and it's the bergamot that I really really like in the Earl Grey tea see they're all yellow and it's, it's so yummy. It's the best Earl Grey tea I've ever had. So I knew that um, it was around, but I just could not get hold of it up here where I am. But finally found it. And um, yes, I've been trying to limit how many cups of this tea I have every day. But it's been about three a day, which is a lot for me at the moment because I've been trying to cut down on, on the caffeine. Anyway, that's the tea <laughs> and if, what I finished. So let's get on with what I am working on. I continued on the Phoenix hat by Sally Jane of the Pink Hair Girl podcast. And I told you last time all the different cows that I'm entering this bean in. And
I had almost got up to like the end of the brim last time and I continued a bit and it looked off to me and I was just not sure what was going on. Then I went back and I read the pattern properly and it turns out that how it was set up was that there's four rounds in the repeat on the brim and you were meant to finish after round three and then start the rest of the hat. And I had completed four rounds and then started. So all of the patterning coming out the hat was all off. So I had to rip back and start over. But I'm, I've done a bit more now and I'm happy with it. This is a mystery yarn, I guess. I think I received it in a swap a while back. And uh, it's turning out really nice. So this is a, a really nice pattern and the money that they get from the pattern they use uh, to help Burns unit at a hospital in South Africa where they live, Sally Jane and her daughter Rachel. So yes, I've been working on that and that's, it's a nice little knit but you do have to, it's not shattered, you have to read the instructions and there's not stuff happening the whole time but I did lose track of what I was doing, so I want to make sure I don't do that again. So I actually um, want to pay attention to the pattern when I knit it. So it's not something I can just pick up like a sock. I have to um, pay a little bit of attention. So I worked a little bit on that, but what I have been, what I've been working mostly on, which I have in this bag that my mum made, is um, a shawl that I am test knitting for Carolean of the Sasu podcast and Sasu yarns. She has shown the finished shawl on her podcast a couple of times, I think. Um, she does not have a name yet for this design. And um, But yes, she has shown it so I can show it off to you. So I have been working on this. And I am using some deep stash green ganasco Bambi Merino Extra Fine in colour 184. I have 250 gram balls, which should be enough to complete this shawl. I'm using my higher highs, 3.5 mils. And yes, it's a nice knit. Um, there's a lot of rows where you only... Um, increase so it's good TV knitting really and I have been enjoying that this yarn is really nice and soft I'm not sure about the color it's it's nice it does have a contrast color border um, and I, I have to come up with some sort of funky color something to make it a bit fun and bright I think so yes I I wish I could just sit all day and just knit on this, but I do have other things I need to do. But yes, I am really enjoying that knit. And I'm very happy that Caroline um, said that I could test knit it. I'm very happy with that. So that's really what I have been knitting on. I have not been knitting on my Proline cardigan, and I have not been knitting on my mittens, colorwork mittens. But I sh I'll show you. This is a bag that my mum made. Ken, this is where I keep my colorwork mittens, and I'll just show you that I found my DPN holders. I have not been using DPNs for so long that I was not sure where I had these, and I did a bit of sorting out here in the craft room, and I found found them on some um, wooden DPNs. So now I have them on here and I'm really happy. These are made by the same person who made my needle uh, holder and other wooden holders for crochet hooks and things. And I really like that. It just has that rubber band in between the two. But no, I have not worked on that at all. So 
So that's what's on the needles. But I do have now that I finished my socks plans for a new pair of socks. Of course, I need to have socks on my needles. I need to have something I can pick up when I'm um you know cooking dinner when I have 30 seconds when I'm waiting for something to boil or something like that. I need to have socks on the go. And I do love my nine inch circulars and I think I'll just always have needles on the go on them. And um yes vanilla socks I think. So I started to prepare for my next socks and I have them in these acorn chasing acorn bags. Chasing acorn bag. So I have this. This is the op op Opal Surprise in colour 4061. And with all the rainbow knits I see everywhere and Mina of the the Knitting Expat podcast she has a rainbow knit along, I think. With all that I seeing all that I just thought no it's time for me to get this out for my stash and knit a pair of vanilla socks. And I have I saw Maya of the Siu Mai Lin podcast. Um, a very nice podcast. And Maya, she's in, in Sweden, but she does her podcast in English. Anyway, she did a pair of, I think they're the brainless sock pattern. I have not knit that before. I've done the fire starter, I think they're called, by the same designer. Anyway, she used this, I think, and they just look fantastic. But I think I'll just, still just do a vanilla sock because that's what I need on my needles. So I'll case this one up as well. Have two cakes and it's all ready to cast on and start. And that's it for the knitting content. So when Claire mentioned me on her podcast, it made me think about all the audio podcasts that I listen to. And that's really how it all started for me. When I, before I had my, my daughters, I, I walked and I caught a bus to work five days a week and I always listened to knitting podcasts and knitted socks on the bus and um, that was a while ago and then it was Stash and Burn, Knit More Girls, Double Knit podcasts, they were the main ones I think and Manic Pearl back then who is now um, Snappy Stitches. Chrissy. So I, I I would listen to them. And then I think I had a little bit of a break because I discovered video podcasts and I was not walking or catching a bus to work anymore. And just sitting with little babies in the middle of the night and during several times um, in the day um, and not having anyone else around and knitting video podcasts were just a nice to have some company and to just something nice to watch that didn't require any brain power at that time. Anyway, and then I am um, I've been doing a lot of walking with my girls in the pram, and I still do a lot of walking with my youngest one, and often when they're sleeping in the pram, and then I listen to audio podcasts. So I still listen to the ones that I started off listening to, but other ones that I discovered were Yarniacs and um, Down Cellar Studio. Just One More Row I listened to and um, a while back I discovered the Prairie Girls. I don't know why I didn't discover it earlier, but I listened to the Prairie Girls Knit and Spin podcast. And then there are podcasts that I, I listen to every now and then, but they, they have so much good information in them, so I want to um, pay attention. So often I save the episodes so that I can listen to them when I can pay attention, and sometimes it takes quite a while until I have that time. But they're the, um, 
a yarn spinner's tale podcast which is great I listened to that a lot when I started spinning so that's also one of the old ones that I've been listening to and now I have a whole backlog of episodes I need to listen to because I want to um, pay attention I want to learn when I listen but that's oh, that's a really nice podcast and other ones are Curious Handmaid and a Playful Day. They're also very nice, but I'm saving those episodes <laughs> when uh, I'm in the right place and I have the time. And then there are a couple of episodes that I recently discovered that I really like. And they're the Skein Enable podcast, which I love. They're so funny and it's great to listen to when you're out walking and when you just need some company I really love that podcast and also Happy Spider Knits an Australian audio podcast which I discovered and I really enjoy enjoy and I think I'm in Australia I thought I should know about the podcast but I actually maybe I sort of knew about it or heard about it but it was not until the Knit More Girls mentioned her that I went and looked for it and downloaded it to iTunes Anyway, there that's the whole bunch of podcasts I listen to. There's probably more, but they're the ones that I try to catch up with. But then there are also some Swedish audio podcasts that I listen to, and I must say that they're probably the ones that I will listen to first when there's new episodes, because I just love, I guess, to have some Swedish to listen to. So there's Stick Podden, which is really nice, and I've been listening to that from the start, and... More recently, but still quite some time ago, uh, some other girls started a podcast called Rett av it. And that's lots of fun too. And for me, it's fun to sort of get a little bit of an idea of what's going on in the knitting world, knitting world in Sweden. And then I mentioned when I talked about the Latvian mittens, uh, Nordic Knitting is another Swedish podcast that's um, full of really nice, really good information so they're just some podcasts and I'll try to link to all of those in the show notes and um, yes if you don't listen to audio podcasts um, download some and try it out for me it's easy to forget about the audio podcast because there's so many video podcasts that I'm always trying to catch up with but um, audio podcasts are very nice too Okay, I did some dyeing, like I said. I wanted to just dye with food colours because I think that's what a lot of um, group members will try for the dye along. And it's easy, it's something everyone can do. You don't need any special equipment or anything like that. So I did grab some Payton's Jet that I had 350 gram balls of and some food ice that I had in my cupboard in the kitchen and just some white vinegar and um, I had a bit of a play in the kitchen with <laughs> these things and produced some nice skeins of hand dyed wool so I'll insert all of that, all those photos with just some little descriptions of what, what's going on in the photos. I'll put that in and you can watch that if you like. It's only two, three minutes long. And I'll come back and I'll talk a bit more about the day.
So yes, that's my little adventure of dyeing. <laughs> and these are the skeins that I dyed. This one, this one here has been re-skeined. And these ones are just the way they came out. Not a huge difference really. I you might have noticed that I only put the white vinegar in with the soak. I did not rinse the yarn then before I put it in the dye bath, but I did not put any vinegar or citric acid in the dye bath. But I was hoping that the the vinegar that had been absorbed by the yarn would be enough. And I think it was. The only thing I noticed when I rinsed the yarn after dyeing it was that the green came out a bit in the water. But I think that was mostly because I just sort of poured it in a few places and it was just too much dye. And um, they could not, it could not be absorbed more by the yarn in those spots. So I'm happy with it now and I think it will be fine. I mean, I will only hand wash this and not with anything else. And if it turns out there is a problem, I'll, any garment that I make or any accessory hat or whatever I make, I don't know, I'll um, probably maybe wash it in hot water and vinegar. No, that probably won't work. I'll have to think about it. I know you can, for smaller items, you can do a citric acid treatment and steam it. But I do think it will be fine the way it is, so we'll see. I don't know what to make with it, if there's anything that I can come up with. But yes, I just dye them to be able to show you if there's anyone who wanted just a little quick tutorial, I guess, on how to dye with food dyes. So that's probably what I have for you today. I am. Um, actually just had a job interview yesterday and it looks like I'll be doing some lab work actually a couple of days a week only for a few months it's just a temporary thing and um, I'm very happy that I'll be doing that I was sort of just reaching a point where I felt like I need to do something else now I'm at home too much <laughs> So um, I might regret that I've ever said that, but yes, I'll be doing some work on the days when my girls are in school and in childcare. But I will have that every second Wednesday, I'm hoping, with only the little one at home and I'll be able to podcast. But it is, it's exciting to do something new and we'll see how it all, how everything will work and how it will fit in together and how I manage to keep the house and everything like that. Anyway, too much rambling now. I'm very happy that you joined me today. I hope you've had a nice relaxing time or that you have been able to get some jobs done while having me on in the background. <laughs> so I'm going to keep on with my busy day. I have a lot of paperwork to do and also a lot of organizing to do in the house especially now that I'll be working a couple of days a week I need a few things organized before I start next week so yes thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time take care bye <laughs>